So these two sample case studies, microcredits, I find microcredits are positive to the development. Give microcredit program, target microcredit owners. Dami, Shokti, Supply, Solar Home System, improve protein soup accessories and offer training to power green macro enterprises in the villages among in the poor people in Bangladesh. In green in-house other organizations are also involved in green development in Bangladesh too. Several of them I Foundation I worked for 10 years. Gamin Master Foundation there also worked for three years. Gamin Danone, you know the the joint collaboration with uh, Danone and Gamin the high tech business also uh, uh, promote uh, the green business. And Gamin High, Gamin Health is really uh, they have a good model. Uh, money uh, return on investment. It is not free. It is not government funded. Uh, so it is one kind of member that is uh, finance this. Uh, uh, their health, you know, health uh, uh, premiums. So, and Grameen hybrid other social businesses are increasing day by day. So, my recommendations are the Canadian micro, micro lending organizations do not streamline enough funds for micro lending. They have the problem, but it's not expanding massively because that is huge demand, micro finance, but these organizations are because they are very, very, uh, what can I say, they are. The limited scale there is that it needs to be scaling up. Environment Canada can allocate resources and buses to Dramin uh, Green Micro and Distribution. Dramin Shokti should publish its activities to share with the world. It is doing very, very good uh, uh, job, excellent job in Bangladesh. So, a lot of the world can learn from this organization. So, they should uh, publish the activities, uh, they should make some partner activities, uh, public booth, um, post their experience with the um, web page. Mm -hmm. These are the, uh, so that the people, the work can learn what is going on uh, in Bangladesh in development, so I thought that we should be. And Bangladesh could support and use for green development. Yes, and Bangladesh, they try to also support but the limited scale, but it should be more, 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 more massively. They should support the uh, microfinance institution, the big network in Bangladesh, so they can work jointly uh, with the microfinance institution uh, on the environment of Bangladesh. The extend integrated support from public and private collaboration to promote big micro institutions and many cooperatives. A um, lot of private institutions are there in Canada. A lot of uh, private institutions uh, like Simco, other uh, organizations, they have a collaboration with other um, uh, environmental NGOs in Toronto, in Canada. So such kind of things need to extend more so that this can massively uh, expand uh, in Canada. So this is my presentation. So if you have any uh, question please, uh, or suggestion, please uh, send uh, post in my blogs at kajirauf.wordpress.com, um, my blogs there. So uh, if anything, uh, questions, I'll try to answer to you. So thank you for listening.
Hello, my name is uh, Kazi Abdul Rauf. Uh, I'm associated with the uh, Social Economic Center, Montreal Institute for Studies in Education. So, I'm going to present Moving Towards Democratic Classrooms for the Students at the University of Toronto through Teaching Assistant Workshop, Workshop, the Center for Teaching Support and Innovation, CTSI, University of Toronto. My presentation, this presentation has two parts. Uh, the first part I'm going to discuss the objectives of uh, objectives of the Center for Teaching Support and Innovation and their uh, uh, workshops. Uh, uh, they are the workshop series they are uh, they are uh, running mm -hmm. and then I'm going to discuss also the strategies they use uh, in the workshop for group discussion for promoting uh, uh, democracy classrooms for the students and the second part I'm going to discuss about uh, my feedback, my, my reflections about uh, teaching assistant and um, workshop uh, uh, that I, I attended uh, in the workshop and also some suggestions. So my first part presentation I'm discussing now the objectives of uh, Center for Teaching Support and Innovation CST workshop. Uh, the object is in uh, uh, to organize teaching assistants, teaching sessions uh, through teaching assistant training program since 2002. They, 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 they facilitated this EATP training program for the for uh, University of Toronto. Uh, teacher TAs um, and the average the participant numbers uh, around 30. The University of Toronto Scarborough and University of Toronto um, Mississippi campus they also facilitate this uh, TATP training. Uh, they also promote um, for the promotion of democratic classroom learning of University of Toronto students to prepare TAs and students to democratic in their practice of teaching and learning and to facilitate peer teaching and peer learning process among the students. So, uh, CTSI uh, usually facilitate their uh, workshop uh, in, uh, in fall and winter. So, in fall, Actually, I attended uh, a CTSI TATB uh, uh, workshops, and uh, uh, in uh, fall 2011, uh, CTSI facilitated 17 workshops, and the uh, researcher attended, I myself attended 11 of them. Uh, CTSI workshops held from September uh, uh, 2011 to November 2011. So, in this, uh, in the winter, uh, they uh, CTSA also facilitate uh, e-learning practicing workshops like online uh, blackboard, uh, e-grade center, grade recording, and PowerPoint slide presentations. Strategies to facilitate TA workshop, TA TV workshops, discussion exercises were in the form of group conversation and dialogue, collaborative learning among peers and the graduate students. So that is the strategies uh, uh, to facilitate the workshops. Uh, 